look sharper with Hubert, Banner, Gray, and Harper. It's the next. Let's hit the music. Let's hit the music. All right, here we go. Salute to Knicks Nation on this Tuesday evening. Another edition of KFTV Post Game Live presented by Manscaped. CP the Franchise, Alex Rotaro's here. On tonight's episode, we are hitting the music because on this night, the final night of NBA in-season tournament group play, R.J. Barrett, Julius Randle, Jalen Brunson, they said, we want to do it for the little guys. We want to do it for the guys at the end of the rotation. We want that 500K, but they had to go out and take care of business and get a little bit of help. But Julius would lead by example with a dominant 25-point, 20-rebound effort. He had a great game by Josh Hart. Mr. I'm not involved in the offense with 17 points off the bench. Emmanuel quickly would pour in 23 off the bench as well. And with that, the Knicks have their eyes set on Las Vegas, ladies and gentlemen, with a 115-91 to victory over the Hornets to advance to the knockout stage. The orange and blue are ready for the NBA in-season tournament. Let's talk about it. Hit the like button, hit the share button, subscribe to the channel. Another edition. A Knicks Fan TV post game live. CP the franchise. Al Chitaris on the other side. Al, I got my glass ready. Mm. A little celebration. Where's your, where's your oh, glass at? Where's your glass at, bro? Oh, man. I wish I wish I'd known. I just got mine right here. I'm just drinking healthy right now. Just drinking healthy. I, all, all let I, me know. All I got to ask you is this. And, and we're watching right now. Is Milwaukee's up by five? Are you not entertained? Oh, don't give I me that. I tried to tell you this was the latest and greatest oh, going on in the NBA right now. And look at look God. at us. Look at it. This guy. This guy. After this guy was the, the curmudgeon, the, the guy who said, oh, this is a tournament. What are we doing here? This is nonsense. And I'm over here. Being I hated like, it. I, like I hate the it. idea. I'm happy for it. I want to see something different. I, I hate it. Too much. I, I completely turned coats. And look, man, as this thing has progressed, I've gotten more and more interested in it. And on a night like tonight where you had the Knicks, and you heard them. They wanted to play for it. They want the 500,000 bags. You had the Celtics and Bulls. Celtics were, tr were washing the Bulls by damn near 30 with their starters in. They're doing hacker drumming, trying to trying to win because the Celtics are trying to win their group. They're, they're going head-to-head -head with Orlando. Orlando's playing the Nets. And so with the Knicks, with this win... They advance, and now it's only a matter of do they win the group if Miami beats the Bucks, or do they win the wild card? But either way, it looks like the Knicks and the Milwaukee Bucks are on another collision course. I mean, never mind the fact, Al, that they got to play each other uh, twice during Christmas week on December 23rd and <laughs> December 25th. They now have to play each other again. Whether it will be in at five serve or it'll be at MSG is yet to be determined. But looks like, uh, and right now Milwaukee's up by five with 20 seconds left in the fourth. So looks like we got to go to Milwaukee, man. If we want to get to Vegas, we got to go through Giannis and Dame. Your thoughts? I, I ain't afraid. Mm. I ain't afraid of that team. Talk, we talk almost had him, CP. Talk about we it. almost had that team. That defense stinks, okay? Yeah, yeah. I watched that team. Look. Dame Lillard is a turnstile on defense. Okay. They they miss Drew Holiday. They miss they miss Grayson Allen. I ain't worried about no Milwaukee Bucks. We we're okay. that we we're this close. We were this close with a 45 burger from Jalen Brunson. You think I'm worried about that team, CP? Yeah. It ain't the same team. Okay. They're so they're still trying to figure things out. We got continuity on our side. I want revenge, CP. I want I revenge. I want revenge. I want revenge, man. And there he is. That's the final. 131 to 124, the Milwaukee Bucks, winners of Group B, will face off against mm. the Orange and Blue Crew. We are ready for revenge. Um, when will that game be? Let's see. The Knicks will be in Toronto on December 1st. That's Friday. So I have to imagine. And the quarterfinals start Thursday the 7th in Vegas. Figure they need a couple days travel, a couple days media hype. So I would have to think that quarterfinal game would have to be Monday. Probably. Probably Monday. Monday, yeah, Tuesday, probably Monday, the latest. Because you want these guys rested because 
the once you get to the quarterfinals, semifinals, all that's going to be very condensed. So yeah, I'd expect Monday uh, yeah. to be the schedule. Mo- mo- Monday, Monday or Tuesday, maybe. So let's let's see what happens there. But you know, like like I would just say this. I, I just think like Breen said it on the telecast, and and he put it perfectly. It just adds another element to the game in November. Something to watch, something to pay attention to. I, I think I think they are accomplishing the goal tonight on a night like tonight. And I think once we get into the knockout stage, the the interest will will start to peak. I, I, I think the interest will start to uh, to increase. Look, man, we just had, we just as you mentioned, you heard Brunson say he wants to win for the guys at the end of the bench. Yep. RJ wants to win for the assistant coaches. We had Caitlin Cooper on for the NBA report the other day. We heard how that has meant to the, a team like the Indiana Pacers, who, who up-and-comers haven't really been in the mix for playoffs or anything like that. This is experience for them. So teams are buying in, man. There's teams that are liking it. Knicks yeah. are now in the mix. I'm liking it. They're a young, upcoming team, and now they get to be – Put back on the national stage for an in-season tournament, and let it be known for this, CP. Yeah. They're 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 one of the first few teams to actually qualify for this thing. That's it. Let that go down in the record books. That's it. That's it. Put that up in the rafters. Put it up in the rafters. Shout out to uh, our franchise channel members in here. We got Will Hooper. Shout out to Ill Willie. Says finally Julius won the matchup over Miles Bridges, and we got to mm. start the we got to start the show and talking about the game, and and salute to Br- Julius tonight. Because, yes, it was a bum night, but we talked about Julius wanting this one for his team. Mm-hmm. And he led with his effort. Led with his effort on, on both ends. Dominant game tonight. 25 points, 20 rebounds for Julius. Uh, he was attacking on the inside, which is what you certainly like. He was facilitating five assists. Thought he was passing fairly well out of the double teams, making quick decisions, which you need him to do. He had a great night for Julius tonight. Outstanding night from Julius and uh, well-deserving to kick the show off with his performance. 25 points, 20 boards. Dominant performance by Julius. All-star performance by Julius tonight. Monster performance. This is what you want to see from Randall, man. You Like, in the first quarter, you saw how he was getting downhill, how he was punishing opponents, whether it was defensively grabbing boards, whether it was on offense and just using his body to get to the cup. That's what you need to see from Randall. And look, yeah. last season, I've written about this in one of the many of my uh, previews for these in-season tournament games. Randall needs to be that first quarter guy again. They had just had to find him. Yeah. He averaged 9.1 points in the first quarter last year. He came second when with total points when it came to how many points were scored in the first quarter, right behind Luka Doncic. That's just, that's got to be the bread and butter for this team, man, because once he gets going, then everything can fall into place. And yeah. you saw that. Yep. And so, I want to see more of Julius Randle attacking in the first quarter. I think they need to go back to that. They got they went away from it. I get that he was struggling to begin the season, the season, the first four to six games. He's now back in rhythm. That's something the Knicks need to do. And look, after having slow starts against Miami, uh, well, he had a strong start against Miami. I should say that. But then he started to wind down a little bit. A slow start against Phoenix. A real slow start against Phoenix. To see him come out that energized in this game where it mattered for something for the in-season tournament, that's what you love to see from a leader and from one of your top dogs. No question. No question. And the question, well, not necessarily a question, but I think an interesting comment in the chat was from, and I lost a person's comment, but they were basically like, is he going to do this against the Bucks? Is he going to do it against the Bucks? Mm. That would be nice. That'd be great. You know, I, I think that would be great. Bottom line, this team needs both Julius and Jalen to be great, for the team to be great. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's no-brainer. It's easy to see. There's a lot depending on him to play well. And on a night like tonight, he got it done. Now let's see what happens when you step up against a competition. You're going up against the Freak, against Brooke Lopez, against Bobby Portis. Those games, he tends to be a little less than all-star level Julius. Let's see how he plays when they... Uh, play again and hopefully we can get some revenge yeah man we'll see what happens yep. i mean if he can step up for that that'd be fantastic um and let's see because the whole question with randall too is hasn't shown up in the in the playoffs right can he show up in the playoffs talking about first year didn't have enough support second year injured ankle well these are high stakes let's see if he yep. can show up for the high stake games right now let's see let's see but on a night like tonight 
he uh he, he definitely dominated so we we give him his flowers accordingly also another storyline tonight josh hart al josh hart mm. came up in the the news today or, or yesterday rather into today stephen bondy of the post reporting and also fred katz reporting that hart not unhappy with his role in the offense, but basically saying that he his slow start to the season was due to the fact that he was out of rhythm and he didn't feel involved in the offense. Didn't feel mm. didn't feel involved in the offense. Mm. And my reaction to that was just play better. It, it's just that simple, man. Like you just got to play better. You got to knock down your catch and shoot threes when you open. Don't be gun shy. And when you're out in transition, do your thing. And that's what he did tonight. Play your game. Play your game, but you got to knock down the wide open threes when you get them. I, I think it's just as simple as that. I don't think his role has been reduced. As Tibbs has said, his role has not been reduced. It's just, if he was shooting the ball efficiently, if he was playing well, you wouldn't hear a peep about it. So I think he was kind of grasping at straws, looking to justify why he wasn't playing well and just overall just just you just gotta play better bro just knock down your shots and play your game mm. i mean this could go, i i see that comment that can go in two different directions one i think you'd be you direct it as the coach right and i think the other you can direct it as his teammates yeah. because uh let's start with because it's easy to, to the bag on tips and go and talk about the coach we already know how you could use that for Grimes this uh, Grimes this season, Grimes last season, Obi last season, and I think there is some truth to that. And look, his role did change. He's playing. He's playing the four, not necessarily the two or the three like he was last season. You brought in Dante. That's less touches that he gets, and so now you have to be a little bit more strategic when you touch the ball. And Tibbs is not necessarily like the most offensively creative guy out there, as we see that can get that can call a guy's number and get you a look. So. As you said, he would have to take advantage of all the opportunities that he gets. However, I think it's more so of a call to the teammates than it is actually to the coach. Mm -hmm. I think it was to saying, hey, guys, I'm open. Stop just looking for me to be doing like uh, the, the catch and three type stuff, even though that's what Tibbs is asking for all of his players to do, to be like another Steve Novak. But I think for him, he's like, yo, Dante, IQ, look for me. I'm open in transition. Let me bring up the rock a little bit of times, okay? Because there are times where you could see – Dante's trying to do his thing, trying to drive and just slow down the game and work at the half court. Or whether it's IQ trying to do the same thing or just get his shot off. Hart is different. Hart is not necessarily the best in the half court. He's more of a guy that's going to be working out in the open four. And so for that, that means he has to grab the board. Someone has to look for him. And you see what happens tonight, right? He gets those opportunities. He takes advantage of them. And it looks good. So, so yeah. I think it's more so of a cry to the teammates more so than it is a cry to the coach. Yeah. I'm not sure, man, because I, I maybe maybe when he's out there with like Jalen and Julius, and then it becomes almost like an RJ situation where it's like, yeah, you know, you, you gotta find find your own dinner, and also knock down your catch and shoots and play off of them. But when, when the second unit is out there, when he's out there with Quick and Dante and RJ and iHeart, I think they play great. They play great tonight for sure. They play a faster pace. They play together. They play good defense. Maybe it's just more of a product of of him playing with Jalen and, and Julius, where he's not maybe he's not getting the ball as much in the half court. But with the second unit, he looks like same Josh Hart to me. Just hasn't been knocking down his shots. I don't know, man. I feel like Josh Hart pops off the screen for most of these games. He hasn't popped off the screen. Yes, the second unit does a great job, no doubt about it. But when you have Dante out there, Dante has to get his touches too. And if you think about last season. Who didn't get a lot of touches with that second unit? It was Obi Top. It was Obi, yeah. Now, yeah. Now, now you have Dante. You can't just say you got to justify what you brought Dante in for to be a guy who is going to be an initiator and a ball handler. So he can't just fill that Obi Top role. And be like, all right, man, you just chill out in the corner. You go do that. That's not what Josh Hart's become. He's taken the four role, which is what Obi was. So I kind of I I don't disagree with Hart to the extent where his role has changed and he has to fill that gap that what Obi did, but. It's, it's a chicken or the egg. It's like a cat and the mouse type thing, man. Like at moments he has to go get his and at op other opportunities, like sometimes it's not going to be there. 
Sometimes it's not going to be there, man. So to everybody in the chat, once again, hit that thumbs up button for you boys. CP and Alex on the ones and twos. Knicks with a blowout win, 115 to 91 over the Hornets. And they will face the Milwaukee Bucks in Milwaukee for the quarterfinals. Win and you're in, man. This is one game elimination, Alex. This ain't that series stuff that we're used to. It's a whole nother ball game. Whole nother mm-hmm. ball game. Uh, shout out to the Rhyme Animal, Chuck D. $20 super chat. Says 25, 20, and 5. Julius Robert Randolph. Match it up. I I can only imagine that we will expect it. We, we will hear from Robert Randolph, Mr. Friday Night Knicks, at some point tonight. At some point tonight. Salute to Santana. $20 super chat. First super chat on KFTV Post Game Live. Says, just because I'm always talking my ish, Trey Julius off Broadway Randall. Tough crowd. Man drops 25 and 20. Guy wants to talk trades. I'm talking Vegas, man. I'm not, I'm not worried about that. The, the trade mm. stuff. I'm talking Vegas. Julie's just trying to get us to Vegas. Let's go. So to Shane Mack from Jersey. Mil Pekovic. Franchise channel members in here heavy. Whitaker Wright. Salute for the cup. For the cup, he says. Okay. We got Ari in the building. Salute. Salute to everybody in the chat. You had a uh, slow start for, for, for Brunson. Didn't really, wasn't really aggressive tonight. Just kind of just coasting, just chilling. I think he only had like three shot attempts in the whole first half. Mm-hmm. So we kind of just let Julius cook and didn't really need to get off. Didn't really need to uh, pause. Didn't really need to to go off tonight. In, yeah, in man. I game. think for, so we, uh, you know, what, okay, you can chill tonight. What, what I gather from Brunson is that he was more of the facilitator. I mean, he came out with seven assists. He got yeah. three steals. Two rebounds. He got you twelve points. He, he, you know, he got his points where he needed to, like, call his own number. But for the most part, you had Randall going. You had uh, RJ, who, even though he didn't shoot well from the field, mm-hmm. he was doing enough to get to the line and went nine for nine from the free throw line to get sixteen points. So, for Brunson, I could look at this saying, you know what, these two guys are doing it. I, I could just take a take a back seat. And then on top of that, what I did like is that he was looking for Mitchell Robinson tonight, man. He was looking for everyone yeah. else to get involved yeah. in this game. And, you know, traditional point guard sense where it's, let me look for everybody else, set everyone else up, and then I'll call my own number one needed. It was kind of refreshing, man, just to watch that because too often it's not that Jalen can't do these things. It's that we need Jalen to be that guy that drops 20, 25, 30 in order for the Knicks to be in it. And I think it's a good way to pace himself for a game like tonight where you see your teammate and Julius Randle going and you don't need to do that, man. Let yeah. him cook. Yeah. Let it, let him cook and take the night off. Absolutely. Save up that energy to carve up Dame on Monday or whenever mm-hmm. that game is. Dame ain't ready, man. Dame, Dame ain't ready Dame. to defend. Dame, Dame's not ready. He's not ready, man. We're, we're trying to get to Vegas here. We got bigger fish to fry. So, yeah, and, and as you said, you, you could definitely see just not even tonight, but season overall in the season, these guys trying to get Mitch to rock a little bit more. And they had some success, some varying success. Still gets a little shaky in, in terms of securing the rock in the paint. But I, I like the effort. I like the effort because, you know, whether it's Mitch or it's Hart, when these guys feel like they are a part of the solution, off, especially on the offensive end, you're going to give that effort on the defense, on the defense, 48 minutes. You're going to be locked mm-hmm. in. You're going to be more engaged. So everybody wants to be a part of the solution. Absolutely. And yeah. look, I liked how Randall gave it to, to Mitch. And then he was like, let Mitch go cook. Let Mitch cook. And then uh, he was fumbling and bumbling, man. He was I almost had it. Almost had it. I, that garden would have just... The roof would have came off the building, yeah. man, if Mitch actually was able to get that bucket. This is true. This is true. Shout out to Tristan Clement, Al. $10 Super Chat. Says, Nick's star players and coaches need to do a better job at running plays for the role players to get their shots instead of making the role players fine and force shots. Well, my God, I, I thought uh, Brunson and Randall tried to do that tonight. Ball, move, ball movement was fairly solid. He said Brunson finished with seven dimes, Randall with five. I thought the ball movement was fine tonight. Hart was playing off of them. You know, he was getting his shots in rhythm and 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 getting his shots off ball. Dante was I thought Dante had a good game, even though it didn't reflect that on, on in terms of scoring. But I thought overall he was pretty solid. You know, got after it on the boards. Uh he got he got good looks. He went two for eight from the field. He got good looks. 
One steal for him. Uh, what do you want him to do, man? He's getting like... This is not the same role that he had out in the Warriors. So yeah. it's... He was more involved in that Warriors offense for that second unit. He's not going to get that same type of role because you have Emmanuel quickly here. So... But yeah. I do like what he offers, man. I do like having another guy who can initiate the offense and just kind of relieve Brunson or even quickly. We were lacking that last season. It was more, you had to rely on quickly who I think he's a much better. He's much better at controlling the rock this season than he was last year. And then mm-hmm. obviously we know what Brunson is, but we saw in the Miami heat series, once quickly went down, we didn't have anybody else. So it's good to have him as a backup guard that can actually organize everybody. But look on a night to night basis, like I think he's a good signing. Um, I don't think, I think some may have like overhyped what, how the impact of his game would have, would translate to what the Knicks needed from him. Um, he's just not up there in that pecking order. So as long as he can give you efforts by grabbing boards, getting you some assists, knocking down some timely threes when he's open, that's all I'm expecting out of him. I'm not expecting him to do what he did against Charlotte, which, you know, that's why everyone's like, Oh, put him in the starting rotation. I'm like, I mean, Sure, it's Charlotte. Can I see it against good teams? Yeah. Yeah. Al, we got 1,400 people in this chat, man. I, I think this is in-season tournament hype. I think the people are hype. Mm. We got, we got, I think we got more casuals in here. They they want to get involved and see what the hype is about. It's in-season tournament tournament hysteria going on here. It's in-season tournament Do we need tournament an in-season hysteria. tournament graphic, CP? Do we need like a different, like a, a bright orange trim? I think, uh, yeah, I think we should have, we should have probably, we'll talk to Gamble, we should have probably customized the layout for the show to match in-season tournament group play. I thought we should have went along with the theme. Probably should have done I that. Know, I know Gambit's hearing this somewhere, popping a cigarette, being like, oh, yeah, God. yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Call us up if you guys want to get your thoughts on, on the game in season tournament and why we're overreacting to all of it. Call us up 657 383 1509, or you could hit us up on the KFTV Discord. Let's go to S on the Discord. I don't, I don't see the full name on the Discord, but go ahead and, uh, and uh, I'll mute your mic. All right. Uh, called in a couple days ago. I think yeah. it was Friday. Yeah. What's your, what's your, what's your uh, name? Where are you calling in from? Name Stilico calling in from Kentucky. There we go. The land of Julius Randall. Okay. A uh, couple, a uh, couple shout outs before I get going. Salute, yeah. of course, to franchise here and Alex. Salute. Uh, salute to my guy Joey and Daisy down here, uh, down there in the Discord chat. Salute. Now, just a couple comments before I get to my question. Uh, I know it's not the NBA report, but a quick comment on okay. the uh, Rockets game. Yeah. If the Rockets turn this out, uh, it de- it will potentially knock the Pelicans out mm. because the Pelicans either go in as the as their division leader mm-hmm. or their point differential is one mm. behind Phoenix. Okay. All right. Now, um. Something that was brought up uh, in the Discord chat where we were talking because there's, you know, all this debate as to whether the money alone yeah. is good enough. sort of a good incentive. Yeah. So I want to throw a couple ideas by you. Uh, mm-hmm. The Discord chat responded kind of positively to them, but I want to get okay. your thoughts on them. Okay, let's do it. Shout out to the Discord. All right. So, number one. Mm-hmm. We have divisions in this league, but mm-hmm. I think we all know that uh, they're kind of pointless as the uh, as the league's constructed right now. Mm-hmm. There was some thought to what if we moved the top four seeds in the playoffs mm-hmm. to uh, each division leader gets uh, gets one of the top four seeds, and then the winner of the in season tournament gets one. And the runner-up, because they'd be in another conference, gets one. So, guaranteed top four slot mm. in the playoffs. For the winner of the in-season tournament? Or, or they get five? They get number five? Well, so, so each conference sends one person to the IST finals, right? Yeah. So, we've got three conferences in each... Or three conferences. Three divisions, divisions. in each conference. Yeah. You add the person that they send 
to the in-season tournament, that's four. You got your top four seeds. Mm. Okay. Now, that's one, uh, one idea. The other idea was the winner gets a guaranteed lottery pick with no trade restrictions on it. And the reason that okay. the no trade restrictions is important is because that means that it's useful to even a contending team right. to go out and get another piece. Right. So okay. I want to hear what your thoughts are to right. something, you know, to that effect. Got it. To make the IST maybe a little bit more valuable. Anyway, okay. Pre- salute once cool. again to Knicks Nation. I'll probably so- call back in a uh, couple games later. Yeah, man, call, call back anytime. Call back anytime. He was a little long-winded, Al, but I gave him a little leeway. I, I extended the shot clock on him. He, he saluted us. That was a good way to, you know, get more time. Then he picked up the NBA report. Catch us Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays on the NBA report, 3 p.m. Eastern time. We'll be back tomorrow with our guy, uh, Juan Tu Combo. We got a great show tomorrow. Had a great one Monday. Shout-out to Caitlin Cooper. You know, he shouted out the show. The, the, the protocols were, were in order, so I gave him a little bit more time. Mm. Um, I think this thing will ultimately come with a playoff spot on the line. The 500,000 is just the start. This is big. This is Las Vegas. They are invested in this thing. They want the TV rights. We talked about Netflix is trying to get the exclusive rights. You see how with this, with the streaming rights, how they're trying to pair off certain things. You just saw Jets and Dolphins, Black Friday, the first Black Friday game. And then, you know, you got Thursday Night Football on Prime. With Netflix trying to get the in-season tournament, I think they're going to put more stakes on the line. They, it's, there's going to be more to it than just the five hundred grand. I think ultimately there will be a playoff spot awarded to the winner. Now, does it come with like automatic top four, as he was saying? I'm not so sure you could do that. Like, does a team like the Pacers deserve a top four spot in the playoffs Mm. just by winning the in-season tournament? And then, you know, they go into a four or five matchup and get, I don't know. It's not a bad thought. It's not a bad thought. I'd probably go five or six, honestly. Five or six. And then you say playing, playing would still get that seven, eight ish. Yeah. Playing still gets a seven, eight. I think if you win the in-season tournament, you get five or six. Maybe six, just because, you know, the value of the in-season tournament is less than of, like, where it is. You just bear- – I think I think that would incentivize even more teams to take it seriously. Yeah. Obviously, you already talked about how you can incentivize the the profits. You need you just need one of those guys like Netflix, Amazon, somebody else to come in here. Then that pot's going to raise up from 500K, and it's going to be something crazy. Yeah. Um, and then guys are really going to get the incentive. Even though they're getting the incentive right now, 500k is still 500k. Like 500k is still 500k. <laughs> no way you cut any way you cut it. 500k is 500k. Yeah. Okay. Um, but at the end of the day, like it's not a bad idea to give some sort of playoff walk to it. Uh, that'd be interesting. I think it's gonna I feel be like the, the incentive. The incentive would be through the roof at that point. Yeah. And, I- but I would say this: like you'd see point differentials mattering, like what we see tonight. Guys are not. Subbing out like we saw Tibbs, some yeah. guys out around the two minute mark. Yeah, if this was something else, Tibbs is like I, leaving those guys in until the, the clock hits yeah. zero. I, I made I made the joke on Twitter when the Knicks were up by twenty something starters were still in. I said Tibbs ain't worried about point differential. He's trying to protect that lead. <laughs> <laughs> this is a regular night for Tibbs, right? Like we've seen this in season tournament. Be damned. We want a twenty point lead. Ain't what it was back in the eighties. So Tibbs Tibbs wasn't worried about point differential, but. It was. It did seem kind of clear that he was getting word from somebody on the bench that yes. you know what what the what was going on around the league, and you even had the from what Breeden was saying, Celtics and Bulls, Celtics up by damn near thirty with their starters in, putting Andre Drummond to the line to get their point differential up. Good so, God, man. Uh, I'm sure Demar Derozan was was not too pleased. He was probably punching air on that, but hey. This is you got to play. You got to pay to play, man. This is the game. I'm sure Zach Levine is just looking at a calendar like, when is December 15th coming along? <laughs> I'll be out of here soon. DeRose is like, can I join you? <laughs> when is it going to be over? What is it going to be over? Uh, Golden State, Sacramento going on right now. Golden State up by 12 early in the first. Mm. See, like and, and like this is another example. Like you have this budding rivalry here. I love it. Between these two teams. Their storyline carrying over from last year, and now they're battling to win their group. 
I, I think it's, it's I think it's an interesting sidebar. Look, I, can I just say something? Yeah. I know that I know the NBA is like this was all randomized. Yeah, nonsense. Don't sell me that. Knicks and the Heat in the same in the same group and the Bucks. You can't tell me on that. You got the Warriors and the Kings in the same group? Yeah. Stop that nonsense. Yeah. That, this, 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 and and this as like usual, frozen envelope and over as again. usual, they give the Lakers the easiest route. Here you go, LeBron, on the way to Vegas. What 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 was LeBron's group? It was the Blazers. You did have the Suns, who were shorthanded, but it was like oh, okay. the, it was like the, the <laughs> who's the other team that was just dreadful. Um I don't know. I forgot who else was in the Lakers. Uh, I'm pulling it up right yeah, now. I'm yeah, pulling it up yeah, right now. Yeah. So tell everybody in the chat once again, hit that thumbs up on Free Boys. Oh God. Yeah. No. 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 The, yeah. It, who Who is in that? Who's in that group? Uh, it is. You had the Lakers, the yeah. Suns, Memphis, the Memphis, Jazz. Memphis, oh, the Jazz, and, the Trailblazers, and, and the Grizzlies. <laughs> yeah, and, and the Grizzlies. There you go. There you go. So. Oh, well, we know. We know. Jaws not in the season, right? It, yeah. You got this one, LeBron. Okay. And oh, you got oh, Scoot oh, and those guys over there. It's okay. What a difficult path for LeBron James and the Lakers. Always having to sweat it out in NBA history, man, to make NBA history. So uh, we'll, we'll see who they draw in their quarterfinals. But the Lakers have been coasting in this thing for quite some time, sweeping their group. Pacers also had clinched. Oh. Those were the first two teams to clinch. By the way, I didn't. I, Timberwolves. Is it the Timberwolves that have a. Or is that. Was, I don't think somebody else. I was thinking Grizzlies and the Warriors uh, mm. beef down. Somebody said it. Uh, okay, what's going on with the Timberwolves? Somebody said Ant Man got injured. Is that true? Or is that Cap? Like the young Ooh. people say. Let's see. Who else we got in here? Shout out twenty dollars super chat from Yo Ed it says biggest Nick win in twenty four years. Easy win. I'm liking the competitiveness this tournament is bringing out in teams this early in the season. Looking forward to hanging up in the hanging up the in season tournament banner. All right. So shout out to Yo Ed. Okay. Yeah. Here, Ant, yeah. Go ahead. Ant Man. Ant Man left the game. Uh, he he was. Yeah. He got. Ooh. He had a nasty fall. Apparently, so he left the game. Damn. Okay. And here we go, Al. Right on time. Right on time. Twenty dollars super chat from Mister Friday Night Knicks himself. Do it just to get there. Robert Randolph. Here he goes. Source. This is what he says. Source. The trade is happening in a few weeks. King Julius and Jalen Brunson will have a third star finally. Grimes, Fournier, and one more. Once a Nick, always a Nick. So Robert Randolph throwing in a cryptic super chat to say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Business as usual next week. You could expect same starters, same rotation. All right, I like well, it. I'm, I'm all for continuity and stability. Well... What I got from that from that super chat, and thank you to Robert Randolph, uh, mm -hmm. is that Evan Fournier and Grimes will be here for the rest of their careers. Yeah, and maybe playing. Maybe maybe Fournier might play. Look at that. Yeah, look at that. Okay, let's see who we got on the phone. So to everybody in the chat, once again, hit that thumbs up on for you boys. CP and Alex on the ones and twos. Bum night for the Knicks, but a big one in Nick history as they advance to the quarterfinals and win the wild card. They, they won the wild card tonight. So, good job by the Knickerbockers. Okay, where am I at? Here, here we are with the phones. Oh, let's go to them. Fat boy from Harlem. Fat boy, let's go. Mic check, mic check. One, two, one, two. Am I clear? Crystal. All right, all right, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, that was such a great performance for my home team. Shout out to the Mods. I see you, Chuck D. I see you, JJ. I see everybody. It's time. I understand everybody's dilemma in this situation and energy being resolved towards Vegas. That's cool, but I got bigger fish to fry, like you said, CP. My odds is always on that Larry O'Brien trophy. I'm tired of these people playing games with my team. If it ain't orange and blue, stay out the chat. I'm just trying to configure people's wave wings because I ain't with none of that. My ribs are touching, and I want that ring. shout out to the mods. I love all y'all. I just wanted to give a, a quick rapid fire. I was chopping it up with Edgar, but... I'm 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 good. I, I love all y'all. Appreciate it. Big up to the mod. I yeah. love all y'all. Have a good night. All right. Fat Boy says he's not with all that end season tournament hype. He wants the real ring. Can't blame him. Can't blame him. You know, it's it's only been fifty years. <laughs> you fifty years. You saw the first one, right, CP? <laughs> 
Was, was, that, was that an age joke? Was that an old joke? Uh, I mean, you tell me. Okay. I, I got you. I got you, man. But, but why can't we have both? Why can't we win the yeah. in-season tournament? No one says we have to. Look, this is still a young developing team. Who says they can't win the championship? You know, I don't know. I'm not going to make any predictions, yeah. but who says they can't do that in the future? True indeed. True indeed, man. Al, I got to I need to grab my um my charger real quick. Just do a quick reset of, and uh give you a quick reaction to the game reset for the people that are just joining us right now. Be right back. All right. Welcome to KFTB Post Game Live, everybody. If you're just tuning in, look, New York Knicks just secured the wild card position for the in-season tournament by beating the brakes off of the Charlotte Hornets. All right, let's go. Let's go. I loved it, man. Love this game tonight. It was fantastic. We get to go see the in-season tournament. We get to go get, hopefully, revenge against the Milwaukee Bucks. That's what we need out here. All right? Salute to everybody in the chat right now and tuning in. Salute to all the franchise channel members. We got Chuck D in the chat. Throw a hashtag PE if you haven't done so already. We got John Talento in here. We got the regulars. Saw Junior Caroma in here. I know we got KG74. We got Triple M. What up? What up, Triple M? What would you guys think of the chat? Everyone in the chat, what did you think of the game tonight? Are you guys hyped about this in-season tournament? TM, if you're here, can you throw a poll up for everybody? I need to know if everyone's hyped about the in-season tournament. That's what I need to know. I'm excited. I think it's different. We we can't keep up with the monotony of the regular 82-game season. Okay? It's ridiculous. Break it up. Have this thing going forward. There will be changes in the future. I'm looking forward to the changes in the future. I don't think this is the final thing of what we got. I think the in-season tournament will change. I think there will be some adaptions to it. Yep. But I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. Look, even did CP you, is joined to I the did, dark side I of enjoying this I, thing. I did. Quick. I, 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 I yeah. I'm, I'm bought in. I'm bought in, man. You know? Look, mm. we, as analysts, content creators, whatever you want to call it, we're locked into this season for 82 games. Regardless. Right? And now we're doing NBA report. We're doing this out in the third. So... It's a little bit different than the casual fan. The casual fan <laughs> can choose to lock in or lock out, tune in or tune out. But for us who cover this thing on a night in, night out basis, even when they're not playing, it's another it's it, it, it's another area of interest. Well, I'd be watching these games regardless if I wasn't doing this. So yeah, I'm just that psychotic. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> simple, simple and plain. All right, let's get to. I see Ari on the Discord. Ari, let's go. Ari, Ari, going once. What up, CP? Good. How you doing, man? Long time, bro. How you feeling, bro? You good, man? I'm good, man. Salute, Alex. What's up, guys? Um, going on, Ari. I I wanted to check. I wanted to call in about this uh, quote unquote IST. I want to talk about the <laughs> IST. <laughs> Um, first of all, we we need to get a new name for this thing. It yeah. sounds like an SPD. The, the NBA doesn't need that. But we, you know, with everything going on with the Giddy situation, That's a it needs a name like the FA Cup, like in soccer, or the yeah. Copa del Rey in soccer. It needs its own name, its own branding. Yes. Right now, like soccer, I've been I'm a big soccer fan. The Copa del Rey, the FA Cup, the in season tournaments of these leagues are very, very important in these leagues because it gives teams that don't have a chance to win the NBA championship, a.k.a. the New York Knicks, a chance to actually win something, right? Yeah. So it's going to take time for it to build, right? I agree with you guys. It needs to either be a playoff seating or it needs to be some kind of incentive which will increase the probability of yeah. the winner winning the actual championship. So, for example, mm. maybe you get an extra draft pick or mm. maybe you get to amnesty a contract, whatever. They have to incentivize <laughs> it in random. some way yeah. where all the teams in the league have something significant to gain from it, yeah. like a draft pick or amnesty a contract. Those teams are going to play really hard in these single elimination games. It'll be a little bit so. like NCAA uh tournament the, vibes right yeah, yeah um, but, but draft but draft picks and and you see how he dropped the amnesty thing he's trying to get julius i know what he's thinking one way or the next he's trying to get 30 yeah, out of here. but no but but i mean those are more front office perks for the players like like the last caller was saying for the players i think playoffs is the thing with the money right like right like a, you take a, a seasoned vet 
who who's been on terrible teams, you know, making the playoffs might mean something to him or or a young team like the Pacers or the Magic or or even the right. Knicks or the Rockets, whatever. But I I think the the those other ones are more like front office goals. I'm not sure players will really care about getting a draft pick. That's true. That's true. But here's the thing: the team the team that wins the in season tournament will prob most likely will already be a playoffs, right? So maybe you know you, ne- you never know. It- you, you never, never know, know, man. Look, look at how the Rockets are playing. Look at the Magic. Look at the Timberwolves. Look no, at the Pacers. Of course. You never know. Listen, I'm not against it. I, 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 I actually like it. I think it's going to take some time to build some kind of prestige over time. Mm-hmm. But for a team like the Knicks, we have no chance of winning a championship. If we win something, it's good, right? Yeah. And these games in the knockout rounds or whatever it is, they're going to be single elimination games. They're it's going to it's going to add an element if it works in soccer. It's going to work in basketball um, in time, but um, it definitely needs a new name, and and um, you know we'll see what happens. But just quick take on the on the game. Um, I'm happy Randall's playing well. Increase that trade value. Um, you know, it's good that the Knicks are beating teams that they're supposed to beat. Um, obviously, we were expecting them to win anyway. I still think the ceiling is capped. I'm worried about R.J. Barrett post uh, post migraine. He's playing like the regular R.J. Barrett. But in general, you can't be upset about the win. Keep pushing forward. But um, the, ins- the the IST uh, is our only chance this year, guys. So we <laughs> might as well embrace it. Thank you for the call, guys. IST. 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 Oh, good God. IST. Oh, the shirts are coming out tomorrow. Let's go. IST. As soon as he called it the IST, my first thing is like, this sounds like a disease. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what he said. That's exactly I know. what he said. I knew that he was going for it. Ar- yeah. Ari Look, Swift, man. This, yeah, this... respect to Ari Brown. Look, he's throwing, he's yeah. throwing uh, you know, amnesty clauses into this. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, that's the first thing he said. Oh, maybe they should bring the amnesty back. <laughs> but, yeah, I think amnesty... You know, Ignacio Lobregat was in the chat. Shout out to guy, Ignacio. I saw that one too, yep. I said, how about extra cap space? Like, those are all front office goals. Like, the players on the team, certain players, you know, the back end of rotation guys are like, yo, I might not even be here tomorrow, much less have to care about a lottery pick or cap. I don't care about that. Like, I'm trying to get to the bag, get that bag, and maybe get some meaningful experience with games that you, you, you're turning up the the energy, the intensity, and trying a little bit harder for. IST Fan TV. No. <laughs> <laughs> IST Fan TV. No, um, eventually. I think the, yeah, good, okay, good. I think that the cap space idea, I don't that's I think that's actually a good middle ground between the players and the front office, right? Because mm. they're thinking about spending to bring other players in here. I mean, you're only still gonna have 15 of a roster spot, but you know, if a player can say, "Hey, maybe I can make a little bit more bonuses," because what you gotta have, you gotta hit that ninety percent threshold for it. Yes, you could get a little bit of extra bonus at the end of the year too. That way, I don't know. That could be a, that could be another way of thinking True. about it. True, true indeed. And yeah, I think look, it's, it's only a matter of time that they do sell the naming rights. You know, this is just the beginning. They're gonna end up selling that thing and selling it for a pretty penny. Hey, maybe maybe with it being in Vegas, does a sports, the KFTV Cup, the KFTV Cup. I like to see our guys at Manscaped get behind that. Ooh. Pause. The Manscaped wow. Cup. Pause. Hey, I mean, <laughs> so that's a lot of wordplay there. I think my guys at Manscaped should should get involved. No testimonials. Go to manscaped.com. Use promo code KFTV for twenty percent off plus free shipping. Hey, maybe the, that, uh, I maybe, can only imagine the commercials and the uh, the logo design for that. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe it's the, the Manscaped underdog tournament. Fantasy. Maybe it's the Underdog Fantasy Cup. You know, it's in Vegas. Maybe the sports book gets behind it. Caesars, the Caesars Cup, the Bally's Cup, the 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 Bet Bet US Cup. Hmm. Good Underdog. Caldero Lab Cup. <laughs> the Caldero Lab Cup. The Manscaped Cup. Perfect. Perfect. I got to call my rep. I'm calling my rep tomorrow. I was like, yo, let's put this through. If they do, uh, just, just give me a little royalties. The mm. Manscaped Cup. Let's do it. Everyone gets a free pair of boxers after they win. <laughs> Everybody, the winning team gets a gift basket, courtesy of our guys at Manscaped. 
There you go. Fight out super chat from G Mark. He says, in European soccer, the IST tournament includes lower divisions teams. Should the NBA include G League teams? No. No. Absolutely not. The, the level of parity, it's just not there. It's just not there. I just feel like like in soccer, you can get caught, you can get caught slipping. There's so many players that are involved that like, yeah, look, maybe a lower division team can sneak one in. All you need is one. All you need sure. is one goal. You, you know what I mean? In basketball, yeah. you got a 48 minutes. You got to prove that you're better than that team. And I don't see the, the talent being close. Soccer, yeah. you can you can have off nights. You can have a situation. Goal gets past a goalie. You know, maybe he makes a mistake. And there you go. You hold the team off. I think for the most part, yes. Like if let's say if you're like a healthy Nuggets team or or like even a team like the Celtics, right? And you're healthy in the tournament. Yeah, that's pretty dominant right there. But you know, Celtics did lose to the Orlando Magic, right? Yeah. I mean, the Orlando Magic did beat the top teams in the NBA. They did beat the Nuggets. They did beat the Celtics. I'm pretty sure they did beat the Timberwolves. So if you go by those metrics, they could theoretically win a game, right? So. Anything can, ha- can happen. I mean, it's single elimination. So that's the more intriguing aspect about the the this uh, this tournament is that out, outside of a seven game series where the best team it's you know best team will win, right? You can't make any mistakes in one game, man. Yeah, you can't. So I think there's I think there's even more variance in these type of things than we'll see it all play out. But I think there's even more variance to this tournament. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yes. When you when you when you factor in a one game elimination, sure. I still feel like the appeal. Like, come on, how many times have yeah. we seen like a team just go off from three, and it's like, oh, yeah. they are just on one tonight. That could yeah. theoretically happen in an in season tournament game, and you're like, wow, there with, they with, go. They with, moved on to the next round. Within the league, sure. I just feel like with the soccer. This is my original point. Why I was against this tournament was in soccer, you just have the potential. For so many matchups that you've never seen before, where potential upsets can happen, potential dream matchups. You got the country pride, the 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 city pride. I just think it's there's just just more pageantry involved, more teams, and more probability to have upsets, different winners, so on and so forth. I don't know. I just think the the variety of it, it it's just it's just better in terms of the the potential pool but we'll see maybe maybe this is the start of i don't know integrating this thing with the world cup or something i don't know well let's look at it this way right right now here are the teams that have made it because we still got games yeah. going on in the west let's talk about it you got the pacers you got mm-hmm. the bucks you got the knicks and you got the celtics those are three of those teams we already saw in the playoffs in the eastern Conf- in the eastern conference last year one of them is brand new in the pacers Right now in the West, you got the Lakers, and that's the only team that's solidified. Right now, you're mm. still waiting on to see if it's the Pelicans, the Rockets, the Kings, the Wolves, the Warriors. Like, yeah, most of those teams have made it, and we saw that last year. But, like, if the Rockets make it, that's interesting to me. Like, yeah. that, a brand-new yeah. team where you have Fred Van Vliet and Dylan Brooks just helping to galvanize that team with Ime Adoka at the helm. Like, I'm interested. And who knows if you get the Pelicans in a fully healthy team and everyone's engaged in playing, that could be all. That also could be fun. So, I like it, man. I, I like it. I think. I think we'll see. I, I'm just looking forward to the knockout round. Hopefully, yeah. things just become mayhem because if you get a team like, I'm interested to see how the Pacers do. Yes, they're a historic yeah, offense yeah. right now. Yeah, right for sure. So, and I'm interested in the Rockets as well because they're gritty. If they if they make some noise and get out of the out of the quarterfinals, that's. Then, then you already did the job of what the in-season tournament's supposed to do. Well said. Well said. And here is Tibbs on the in-season tournament on the Knicks advancing and the task at hand. Here is Tom Thibodeau. Here we go. You know, the, my, my, yeah, well, the, the thing is, it's like, Whatever your circumstances are, you make the bet. When they tell us we got to play this team five times, we play them five times, and and be ready that whatever it is, you know, they they say it's eight times, it's eight times. 
right? Whatever the schedule says, that's what you have. Sometimes it's in your favor, sometimes it's not. Just be ready to play, and that's what that's where we want the focus to be. You know, and so don't change your strategy of how you prepare. Get ready for every game, and then analyze what happened, and then move on to the next one. You know, you, you can't feel too good about your wins because they keep coming. All right, and that was Tibbs on on the Knicks having to face the Milwaukee Bucks five times this season. What do you think about that? Do you think there's like, do you have an issue with that? Having to, having to play that team? Some teams you play three times, some teams you play four. And in this instance with the Bucks, it looks like they will be playing them five times this year. We had If we had a weaker team that we would be facing off against, we'd be jumping for joy. Yeah. It is what it is, man. Sometimes, yeah. Like, I don't really, I'm not really terrified of the Bucks to begin with. So, mm. not really. You want to smoke. It, I, I do, man. I want okay. revenge. Look, they, 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 they got lucky. They okay. didn't really do much to defeat the Knicks, okay? Yeah. And they and they barely escaped Miami, okay? Mm. All right. So let that be known to how I feel about the Milwaukee Bucks this season. Um, but I, I, I'm – look, if you got to play a team five times because that's how the cookie crumbles, it is. I mean, it's not the Knicks are not the only team that have to deal with this scenario. There are other teams as well, so – it's not like, oh, the Knicks are the only team that has to face the Milwaukee Bucks five times. Somebody else is going to be facing somebody else multiple times. So, <laughs> it's what it is. Triple Eps says five times is OD. <laughs> I have a problem with it. <laughs> well, hey, what'd your guy Herm Edwards say? What'd your guy Herm hey. Edwards say? <laughs> Look, man. What'd he say? I, are, you, are you a Jets fan? I am a Jets fan. Play to win the game, baby. That's you it. play to win the game. Hello, that was a great. Well, that was one of the best quotes of all time. Man. Shout out to Herm. Her, I love Herm. <laughs> too bad he didn't do too well in Arizona. <laughs> you play to win the game. That's it. You can't worry about it, man. That's it. Ten dollars super chat from my guy Abdul from San Diego. Shout out to everybody up there on the West Coast. He says, one, two, three, IST on me, IST. Salute to the squad. Let's go. Get those likes up. Always good checking in. Shout out to the replay gang. Shout out to our guy, Abdul Al, a loyal, loyal franchise channel member. And as he said, salute to everybody in the chat. Hit the like button. Hit the share button. Subscribe to the channel. The number one show for the fans by the fans is on and popping right now. We got a crazy number of people in the chat. This is KFTV. Welcome to all of our franchise channel members, our day ones, our new viewers, whatever you guys are. We welcome you to the show. And also for our franchise channel members, man, make sure that you guys uh, tune in on Friday. Because on Friday's edition of KFTV's Post Game Live, we are doing our November edition of our franchise channel member giveaway. One lucky franchise member is going to receive the Kith Pack. And that entails a free KF uh, Knicks and Kith collaboration t-shirt. This was straight from Madison Square Garden. You're going to get the Knicks and Kith commemorative cup, collaboration cup, this collector's item. And you're going to get the uh, poster, Knicks and Kith. There you go, Julius Randle, the monster man, 25 points, 20 rebounds tonight on the Empire State Building in his Kith gear. Uh, this insert has a number of Knicks players past and present uh, in their Kith gear, plus... It pulls out into a Carmelo Anthony solo poster. So we're going to give that away on Friday to a lucky franchise channel member just to show you guys uh, uh, our appreciation for your support. Okay. All right. Back to the phones we go. Kumar from Connecticut. Kumar, how you doing? Hi. How you doing? Good, man. How you feeling? I'm doing well. Thank you. Yep. Just uh, my observation is one. IQ is uh, really, really playing well right now. Um, what do you guys think? Let's say they let him play then till the end of the year. Mm -hmm. You think he's probably going to demand about thirty million a year, or between what twenty five a year, or you think while while he's playing well, they should probably try to trade him and get the best package they can get for him. Obviously, they're going to lose it yeah. for nothing. I just wanted to get your opinion, please. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate the call, man. Hey, um, quickly is looking good. 23 points on the night for quick. Uh, another solid outing for quick. I, I think 
he, unless, you know, we, we say this all the time, unless it's for the big ticket acquisition, I think IQ is way too important for this team and their goals and making the playoffs and competing in the playoffs. I think he's too important to that goal to just give him up for, you know, a, a sideways upgrade just to avoid losing him for nothing. Like, unless it's just for that, unless it's for like Donovan Mitchell or that big ticket, I think he stays. And hopefully they keep him. 30 mil is crazy. No, I, I don't think he's going to be looking for 30 mil. Would a team like San Antonio pay quickly 30 million a year? I don't think they'd be that desperate, even though they will have a ton of cap space. But I think the number's going to be somewhere in the t- low 20s. It's going to be low 20s for quick. I think he'll be back with this team. I hope so. I hope so. I hope that he's back with this team too, CP. I mean, I think the question I'd go from here is that, you know, this is Grimes' third season in the league. He'd be due. I, I would wonder what the feeling is with Grimes right now in the team because you can't. Obviously, we always had the discussion. You can't keep everybody. Can't keep everybody right now. Quick is quick is on top of the, is, is above Grimes in priority. Mm-hmm. And the value that he brings to this team and, and wh- how important he is. If that happens, what's the next move I'm thinking if you pay him? Because you can't sign everybody and keep all these same level contracts around here. You got to move something. Yeah. So that's only my thought. But I do want the Knicks to keep quickly. Like, he's too important to this team, man. Like, you can't. And the <clears throat> the other thing is that just drafting somebody to replace him isn't a great idea either. It's you have a known commodity in Emmanuel quickly. It's safer to keep him because he continuously shows that he can improve every single season. Right. I'd rather invest in that than take another gamble on, oh, well, let's just go back to the draft and go see how we can solve those problems. Yeah. No. Well, based based on their goals and where they are, they can't really afford to do that at this moment. Like he's he's too important. He's too important. And he's getting better every season. You could just see it. It's the same way just mixing Mitch and his role. You could see it with RJ as well. It just in terms of how they're they're grasping their assignments, man, and just really just really owning their roles on this team. You Yo, watch this about, team year about, over year, you could see it. How about Mitch tonight, man? How about Mitch tonight? We didn't even really discuss it. Mitchell Robinson yeah, yeah, tonight. Yeah, talk about it. Dominating oh Mark Williams God. once again, man. Mark Williams is having nightmares. You better not want to see that man at all anymore. You Mitch out here just just sheesh. Mitch and Mitch Mitch yeah. had a slow start in the last game too. But you're talking about ten boards, right? He got six blocks tonight, CP. Yeah, six, six blocks and two steals. He's leading the team in steals. Yeah, this man is active on the defensive side. I love how Mitchell Robinson is just. He's so good, man. He's really just phenomenal. What he does. like the way he guards the pick and roll, the rim protection, man. Everything about Mitch, he just comes back in there. And the, how about quickly misses the three point shot, comes out of nowhere, gets the putback. Yeah. The emphatic oh, that, oh, slam. That, that, yeah, that putback was there. Yeah. yeah, that putback was it. Yeah. That so, was it. I, I love everything that Mitchell Robinson's been doing, man. I know yeah. it hasn't been, there have been games where, you know, especially against KP, it's been difficult. But if anything, this is also why I'm encouraged that the Knicks, the Knicks facing the Bucks, he did a solid job against. Defending against Giannis and Brooke. Now, Brooks can, Brooke can shoot the three, so any big that can shoot the three is going to be a little bit of a problem for Mitch because he's taken away from the paint and he can't do his job. But I like how he was I like how he was defending against the Bucks, man. He was not he wasn't shying away yeah. from uh, the smoke. I like that. And especially with how disciplined he is with the fouls, it gives you confidence that he could hopefully hold hold it down. One foul tonight. One foul. Look at that. One foul. Insane. And here is head coach, Knicks head coach Tom Thibodeau on Mitch's effort tonight. This is courtesy of SNY videos. I'll be on I'll be on SNY tomorrow, Honda Sports Night. Here is uh nice. Knicks head coach Tom Thibodeau. Here we go. Yeah, I mean the, the thing is like his effort plays are special. Like because to me that it inspires the team. Like it's not you know, he's not going to have a 40-point night, but he's got – he's like some of the plays that he makes are just incredible. They're great effort plays. They're in, oftentimes there's two, three, four efforts on the play, and he's got bodies all over him. And, 
people are clamping and holding him. He's still get he's still getting to the ball, and it's a credit to him. And then, you know, his pick and roll defense is you know terrific. His rim protection terrific. So uh, all the intangibles that he brings to the team, I think. I, I say this all the time. I know his teammates have great appreciation for what he does, and you know, coaches our whole organization. But sometimes people don't realize the impact that he has. And Isaiah, same thing. Like those two guys have been terrific. Yep. And and uh, <clears throat> the audio was a little bit low on this one. It was, it was like left ear dominant. I gotta talk to my guys at SOI. We gotta get better post game audio. So that we can listen, we got to give it to the people, right? We we give our analysis. We got to give them the, the, the behind the scenes. And SMY has got to get better mics. Julius has to speak up in his mics, and 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 Tibbs has to speak up in his mics. But but basically, he said it's great effort, great effort. And and you know what, Al, speaking speaking about the the lack of effort in the Suns game, kind of had to expect that they were going to come out with a bit more edge tonight. And I felt like Julius set that tone and Mitch set that tone. You play in an inferior team, go out there and dominate. Get after it. Get, play your A game. Get after it on the boards. Dominate. Send them home packing. And that's what they did. And Tibbs was right. iHeart was also after it on the boards as well. How many boards iHeart finished with tonight? Let's take a look. iHeart finished with, yeah, Mitch finished with 10 rebounds, five on the offensive side, five defense. Six blocks and two steals. And you had iHeart off the bench with uh, six boards. Three and three. Three offensive. He had a couple putback slams and two assists for iHeart. There you go. That's yeah. something I noted in my uh, preview, man, for NickSantv.com. Make sure yeah. to go over there and support the website. Absolutely. There's a few things I, I noted, and one of them was that we had to get back to dominating the boards because – Last game against Phoenix came out slow. And that's what we did against Charlotte in the other two games. So we had to replicate that. And this the Charlotte's team is just bad on defense, man. They're yeah. they're the worst. They're the worst in the league. They're dead last. They allow teams to put up a lot of threes. They allow teams to finish around the rim. And that's where the Knicks succeed. So good recipe for success. But Look, you talk about them coming out with their A gay against a, a, a lowly team like the Hornets. I need to see this against the Bucks, man. Bring that energy against the Bucks. Yeah, that's what I need to see. It's nice that you can beat up on on lowly teams. How about you go play some Smash Mouth basketball against teams like the Bucks, the Celtics? Go show them where you stand. Let's go. Go show. Go fight in your weight class. Yeah, Hornets aren't in, the, in your weight class. That's all I asked for, man. True indeed. True, true indeed, man. Uh, salute to everybody in the chat once again. Hit that thumbs up button for you boys. Hit the like button. Hit the share button. Subscribe to the channel. Let's see. We got some more um, super chats coming in here. Salute to Blade Pinderhughes. $10 super chat says, when is Tibbs going to realize that the team plays better when Quick is out there on the floor? Too many long stretches where he sits. Yeah, well... I, I think Tibbs realizes how important Quick is to the team and, and and their goals. In this game, when the Hornets were cutting it close, I mean they I think they cut it to one. And I don't think Tibbs I mean I don't think Quickly came in until about four minutes left in the third. So was that a little bit long? I mean you be the judge, but I, I don't I don't think Tibbs is taking quickly for granted. I don't see that. I don't think so. How many minutes do you get tonight? Quick, quick yeah. got, quick got twenty six. Okay. Twenty six for quick, twenty eight for RJ, nineteen for Grimes, nineteen for Divincenzo. Look, tonight wasn't 30, a necessary 30, night 30 where for heart. Go ahead. Tonight wasn't a night where you necessarily need quick that much, but as we saw on the Phoenix game, like he played, I think he played twenty eight, twenty nine, some odd minutes, like. Tibbs realizes actually the thing that I think is really impressive is that last season we'd see Tibbs go the entire third quarter with the starting unit and not make any substitutions. And if he was, it was like with a minute or two left. Quick is getting in there with like five minutes to go. It's quite yeah, a new development yeah. on my uh, to see from Tibbs. So I like that. I'm just asking for more uh, more experimentation with rotations. But yeah. I like that quickly is getting in there earlier, man, because he is important. Look, he comes in early in the first quarter. 
Now he's coming in early in the third quarter. Tib realizes. I mean, he's even closing the game. So Tibbs understands how important quickly yeah. is to this team. I think so. I think so. We had another super chat from <clears throat> just going through the super chats here. One second. Another super chat from John Smith says, what about mine? John, your comment, I can't, I'm not sure what the question is, John. John Smith, $10 super chat. You got to, if you could rephrase that question, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll address it. But please, you got to rephrase that question. Salute to Terrence Aguilard, a new franchise channel member, Matt Vasquez. Salute to Matt Vasquez, linked up with him yesterday. And nice. uh, yeah, linked up with Matt Vasquez. He was, I think Matt was... Our 50,000 subscriber giveaway winner. And the. Wow. I think so. I think it was 50 or something like that. And the prize was a, a, a giveaway, a authentic Brunson jersey that we were giving away. It was an Ooh. issue. NBA.com messed up the order, didn't ship. It, it was sold out. I got him a, an authentic um, City Edition jersey. End up being sold out. They never sent it, never notified us. Got all caught up. So ultimately, uh, we got it. We got it to him, and we gave him some more in his prize pack. So he, he went home a happy camper. So salute to Matt Vasquez. Nice. Salute to Flizzy Flex. Fight out Super Chat says, it will not be tolerated 2020. I think maybe he's talking about Julius. Okay. Will Hooper, ill will. Salute. We got the Ryan Animal Chuck D in here. We got Devin Cerna. Franchise channel member says it had to be the Bucks. SMH. Here we go. Well, time to put up a shut up, man. Time to put up a shut up. Let's win. I want revenge. Let's win. We got revenge on Miami uh, on Friday. I want revenge against the Bucks. Let's do it. Trish and Clement. I think I got that one. Shout out to Gamba the Bard. Franchise channel member says Julius is trying to get the Young Bucks paid. Run it up. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Bill Bull Swaggins fight out Super Chat says, this tournament was tailor-made for Tibbs. He looked like a kid in the candy shop watching his starters give max effort up 25 with two minutes left. I'm telling you, man, he's into it. He's Stick. like, oh, oh, y'all want to run it up? Oh, y'all want starters in? No problem. No problem. Yeah, Tibbs is with it. He said, hey, whatever we got to do to win, uh, that's, that's what I'm here for. Oh, uh, hey Jalen, are, are you ready? Are you ready to play forty-eight minutes tonight, Julius? We're gonna have you play. We're gonna have you play fifty-two. Uh, uh, even though there's forty-eight, we're playing fifty-two tonight. You like that, don't you? Yeah, hey, that wasn't bad. Well, hey, chat. Rate Alex's Tibbs impersonation in the chat. One being trash, five being facts. Is it tomatoes or is it fire emojis? You guys be the judge. I'd like to present that to the chat for a vote. Let's do it. I would like to present that to the chat for a vote. All right, what other uh, super chats we got in here? We got Yo Ed, we got Robert Randolph, Christian B. Ooh, fight out super chat says if the Knicks make it to the finals, will Alex bring back Mr. Vegas? Mm. That is what the people really want to know. Will Mr. Vegas be back? If the Knicks make it to the make it to the finals, as my wife is shaking her head, I was I was just about to say, are you looking? You look like a little distracted. I think the missus was giving you the eye. Was she giving you the eye? She was like, "Oh my God, Mr. <laughs> Vegas." <laughs> we she, shall you, see. You said she liked that segment when we when we did it in Vegas. Oh, she did like that segment. She's just thinking about me going back out to Vegas with a baby. <laughs> Shout out to Mr. Vegas. Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. Uh, I mean, I'd love that was to. a good time. Look, Absolutely. if the Knicks make it all the way, I'd love to be back out in Vegas. Yeah. Woo! Likewise, likewise. Um, yeah, that that would be that that would be great. You know, it it would be great if JD would would uh, charter the private plane for us. You know, I'd like to see the sphere, take a little tour. Mm, the sphere. No, I'm not. I'm not talking about RJD. I'm talking about, you know, the big homie. <laughs> you know, Char chartered oh, a plane. He's, he's done it in the past. Chartered a plane for us, man. You know, hmm. we, we did yeah, a little. You know. We did a little commercial. You know, we, 
We, we pump a tickets on the commercial, you know, send the, send the jet for the kids, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Why not? You know, somebody well, damn she's watching, listening, send the jet for us, man. Come on, man. They follow us. They know. Yeah. Sure, we're trying on, to scrounge man. up super chats here for a charter. Send the Look, jet, man. You know? We need help. Yeah. Save our expenses. That's right. We help you guys. Okay. That's it. That's it. Help us help you. Yeah. That's Send us it. the private jet. Get us out to Vegas. Get get us a get us a jet. All right. You know Spencer will run all high over here. Yeah. <laughs> you know they 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 they, they got uh, lady KFTVs all over the commercials. She was on the TV like five times today. They ran the commercials back to back to back. Mm-hmm. We, we got to see some residuals out of here, man. Cut the checks. <laughs> <laughs> you re- you ready to drive up to, to Westchester to go take that flight? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, if I gotta, you know, if we gotta go to Tarrytown, I can get up there. A little tap and see bridge action. Oh no, no, what was it? I think the no, the airport's in uh, it's in White Plains, Harrison. Oh, okay, that's your hood. I, that's your hood. I yeah. don't know. I don't. I don't be yeah. over there, man. That's your hood. Oh, good God. <laughs> <man>. <laughs> The guy who just the guy who just went out to Rockland to go host an event for Jalen Brunson. <laughs> I did, I did, yeah, I did. Salute, salute, Flyboy Kevin, the chat, Rudy Tay, salute. All right, who else we got? Oh, we got to go to our guy. Speaking of star, speaking of commercial, let's go to Cody Glock. This guy Mitch was activated tonight. We got to we got to mm. go to our guy, the president of the Mitchell Robinson fan club, Cody Glock. Let's go. That's hearing me. Loud and clear. I I got to go super indoor voice, man. Yeah. You know. Okay. But, yo, sh- shout out Manscaped, man. I have still turnovers because of Manscaped, man. Mm-hmm. I have, you know, I take care of my ball profusely, man. Mm-hmm. Yo, man. Yo, as I sit down, you know, unwind, man. Listening to the show, you know. Got a nice lemon ginger tea, you know, ginger tea with a lemon in it, hot, you know, okay. bun spliff, okay. you know, bun spliff. You know, I, I'm I'm hearing the way Alex talk about Mitchie, and it's just putting a smile on my face. But Alex, you Mitchie have, man? <laughs> you yeah, man. Mitchie you, have all you the Mitchie, way. You, you taking a little stroll on Mitchie Street <laughs> with, with your boy? You feel me? You know, yo, know. let me tell you yeah. something about, let me tell you something about Mitchie. You see, says, 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 Mitchie, says, 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 Mitchie. You see, in mm. season, Mitchie, in Mi- season, Mitchie is not playing. I sit down, analyze my Knicks, you know, nice little game, bun split, you mm. know, okay. and Mitchie's going bananas. Mm-hmm. You feel me? I, I, I'm gonna. It's rapid fire, man. I gotta. Okay. I gotta pack it up, man. My, my my lady, she tripping, but I love y'all, man. You already know. Shout out Nikki Pipe. Shout out the little thunder, man. Quickly, I'm out, man. Peace, Appreciate man. it. Appreciate it. Cody Glock, ladies and gentlemen. Cody Glock on the Discord. I don't think he saw the game. <laughs> my man's was zooted. I don't. I think he might. Have, I think he was probably watching uh, the last week's Charlotte game. <laughs> man's watch on tape delay yeah i think them edibles is kicking it right about that he, he was watching last week's game shout out to cody glock i don't even know how to respond to that shout out to, shout out to cody the edibles are hitting <laughs> they, they was kicking it right about now but shout out shout out to cody he was, he was definitely on last week's game Okay, so to everybody in the chat, once again, hit that thumbs up button for your boy CP and Alex on the ones and twos. Knicks win 115 to 91, advancing to the in season tournament quarterfinals, the knockout round. But they've got to get through Giannis and get through Dame to get to Vegas for a chance to hoist up the Manscaped Cup. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see if they're ready. They got to get through Toronto on Friday. Don't overlook Toronto on Friday. And then whenever this game is, I'm checking. Al, have you checked uh, Ian Ian Begley's account? Have you checked any other beats account? Do we have any dates on this on this matchup with the Bucks? I haven't seen any dates yet. We're thinking Friday, maybe Tuesday. Yeah. 
I would have to think for I would have to I'm sorry, I would have to think Monday. Monday or Tuesday. I would have to think Monday though. Monday, Tuesday. Yeah. That is I'm thinking that too. I'm still waiting, man. I see yeah. no updates yet. I would have to think it's Monday. Then you fly to once you beat the Bucks, you fly to Vegas Tuesday. They'll have the press conference Wednesday mm-hmm. for all four teams. Yeah, practice Wednesday. And then you play Thursday. Mm. Right? Yeah. Well, I think we'll get all that. I think they're still waiting on the Kings and Warriors game to kind of figure that out. I mean, the Pelicans just wrapped up. Pelicans just yeah. uh, won. So they're on. So now you got Lakers, Suns, Pelicans. We're just waiting for the Warriors-Kings game to solidify everything. Yeah, looks like the Dubs. Well, CP3 left this game. Looks like he got hurt. Oh, boy. But looks like the dubs, they were in control of this thing. It's Just in now. time. Just CP3 in time. getting injured for a playoff type atmosphere. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. Absolutely. Man. Now, uh, some more Super Chats. Oh, shout out DJ Mr. Man BK All Days is welcome. Oh, welcome to the Franchise Channel memberships, man. Franchise Channel members, salute. We got 1570 in the chat. Let's get those likes up. Let's get up to 1,000 likes. Hit the like button, hit the share button, subscribe to the channel, share this on Twitter right now. If you guys are new in the chat, also try, uh, type in hashtag new in the chat and we will shout you guys out. Salute. Malik's Lounge says, hold up, just getting home from work. Randall had how many rebounds? Jeez, he heard the chat. Yeah, yeah, 20. 20 boards for Julius. Outstanding game for him tonight. Great job by him. We have a super chat from Epicness, $5. He says, I know they'd never do it. Because uh, because of money, but for real, I think they pass up the opportunity to call the trophy the Kobe Cup. Okay, so so he wants us to pay homage to the Black Mamba, Kobe Bryant. Did they give Kobe one of those extra? You know how they 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 created those extra awards last year, like the the Clutch Award, the Jerry West Award for Clutch Player. Yes. You know, they renamed everything. They have the Eastern Conference MVP, Western Conference Finals MVP. Was one of right. them those after Kobe or no? Uh, I didn't think so, no. Mm. Shout out to James Dempsack in the, in the, uh, in the chat. Oh, they, the NBA All-Star Game, Kobe. Wait, is that it? Uh, it might is be. That, oh, it's the MVP award for the All-Star, All-Star Game. All-Star. Okay, so Kobe's got that. But yeah, I think I think that person's right. They're gonna sell that that the rights to that cup. They're gonna I think they're gonna sell the rights to it. I'm gonna rest in peace to the late great. Shout out Sebastian Creston. Sebastian, how you feeling? Charm boy, what's good? <laughs> salute to Charm Boy. Salute to all our mods, JJ TM, salute to you guys, of course. Of course, of course. Okay. As as we wind down, let's get through some more super chats, man. People showing love today. Salute. Salute to Frank Haddock. Okay, salute to John Smith. Here he goes. He clarified. Bench comparison, Al. Bucks versus Knicks. Who has the better bench? And that's the difference, he thinks. Who has a better bench? I think the yeah. Knicks have a better bench. Yeah. Knicks have a better I think- bench. I don't I don't I don't necessarily think that that tilts the game tilts the game from one side to the next. They got Giannis, they got Dane. Yeah, I mean, we. I hate relying on the bench because we thought about that for the playoffs last year, and we saw how that played in our played against us. Right, yeah. quickly didn't really show up. Uh, it's tough, man. Mm. It's tough to really think how the bench is going to impact this game. Yeah, but we do have the better bench on paper. I think production for, from a production standpoint, the Knicks have the better bench, but. The thing is, like, we're going against Dame and, and Giannis. So that's – as much as they have a bad defense, you still got to worry about Dame putting up 30 and Giannis putting up 30. Exactly. Both those guys can go for 30, 40. We've seen Giannis put up 50. So – They got superstars. Bonafide. Yeah. That can that can wreck games. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the difference to me. Mm-hmm. You know – that that's the difference. Our bench should help. We, you hope that they do, and and maybe they they'll give us a spark. We always have a tough time against that team, man. Mm-hmm. 
So Always do. I, I but don't, we were so yeah, I close, CP. I we, got faith. We close. We I close. got faith. We close, man. We close. They want it. So we'll see. So if we uh, just just to just to give the the people a, a look at the week ahead, we have NBA report tomorrow. CP Alex. Our guy Andrew Salop, the one two combo, will recap uh, the in season tournament league wide, plus dish on the latest league storylines, news, rumors, and things of that nature. We'll have our game of the week preview Knicks versus Raptors game of the week. That will be Thursday. We'll have Knicks versus Raptors on Thursday. Um, I mean, on Friday. Who, when do we have the Pistons? Thursday. I mean, it's Thursday night, Pistons, right? The Pistons are playing Thursday night. We got, okay. we got a back to back Raptors. On Friday, yeah. so so game of the week preview will be probably Friday morning or Friday matinee. We'll do matinee game of the week preview. Or we or are we doing it Thursday? You still doing it Thursday? Yeah, still doing it Thursday. We're doing it Thursday. We're doing it live. We're doing it live Thursday. We're doing it live Thursday. Then we'll have post game live Knicks versus Pistons, and then we'll have post game live Knicks Raptors on Friday, and we'll figure out our game of the week preview and play by play. Post game for Knicks Bucks as well. Mm -hmm. Action packed. Oh, we'll be doing play by play for Knicks Raptors as well. Oh, I'm doing play by play for Knicks Raptors as well. Never ending. Never, never ending. ending around here. Never ending. Presented by Underdog Sports. Shout out to our guy, uh, CK C Kizzle, and also Al. I think I told you guys on on Sunday during weekly. I retaped a great interview with longtime Knicks trainer Mike Saunders. Do we mm. do that today? We're gonna drop that uh, sometime this week. Be on the lookout for that to put your notifications on. Incredible, incredible stories from his illustrious 27-year career on the Nick bench. Mike Saunders, Al, uh, uh, served under Red Holzman, Pat Riley, Jeff Van Gundy. Wow! Isn't that insane? That is insane. That is that is insane. He's seen all the greats, all of them. Wow, incredible. Yeah, yeah. So we so we went in. We went in '90s Nick style. Uh, uh, yeah, he he loved it. We took a trip down memory lane and and got some new stories. I think I always appreciate that, especially the guys we speak to from that '90s era, as you get their vantage point of those key events that we rehash on, but. You get different perspectives, so I, I respect that. For sure. And look, there's like stories and just it's a different perspective, right? I mean, obviously a player's perspective is great, but the people who are behind the scenes too, they make such a big impact for these things. I'm looking forward to it, man. I'm looking forward to hearing that interview. Yeah, sure, for sure, for sure. So to Brian Jordan, just joined the franchise channel members. Shout out to Steven Santiago, $20 Super Chat says, I'm a sinner of emotions and opinions, yet I realize we are not here today overall without Tibbs or Randall. Things get even better, better. Okay. Yeah, that's, uh, that is, that is, uh, that is a fact. That's a fact. The Knicks aren't where they are today without Tibbs or Randall. I think you have to be able to admit that. Absolutely. Can't you can be frustrated with them, but I, I mean it's even when when people talk about Brunson being like who's the last best free agent signing buff before like before Brunson, you gotta say Randall. Like yeah, yeah. R Randall's been part of everything that you that this season's been successful during this tenure, so you gotta give him his respect. Same thing with tips. For sure. For sure. Oh, how about how about this? How about this for the in season tournament? This is one thing I, I wanted to um to touch on. ESPN and TNT are collaborating. They're getting into collab yes. business. They're forming the Avengers for the in season tournament. Uh, according to some website, Warner oh Warner Brothers Discovery PR Ble Bleacher mm -hmm. Report TNT. ESPN and TNT will blend their coverage of for the for the semifinals, featuring Ernie, Charles, Kenny, Shaq, Stephen A., and Michael Wilbon. What do you think about that? I like that. I like it, man. I mean, it's. I think you tweeted out the Avengers. Yeah, I like that. I, I'm actually curious to see how Stephen A. Fits into that entire. Oh my god, yeah, he's gonna be so over the top and ridiculous. And, and don't let us be in there. Oh my goodness, 
Oh my goodness. You, you're going to have the fake Knicks cheerleader in him with the number one Knicks hater in Charles Barkley and Shaq and put them up neck and neck because they both hate on the Knicks religiously and never watch and then a pine on them. He's it's going to be crazy. You know, you know, if the Knicks make it, it's going to be, they're going to have that segment planned out where it's like, all right, Charles, all right, Shaq, you're going to have to fight Stephen A. Who's going to yeah. rep and it's going to be his whole thing. And it's like, can we please get the actual yeah. Knicks fans? Yeah. yeah. Not, yeah. not a guy that leaves before you watch before the 21 point comeback by his own team. Can, can we get that? Can we get somebody from actual Knicks nation to talk yeah. about him? I, I like it, man. I think it's a great gesture in this era of media sports content. They're not competitors. You should be collaborating. Rising tide lifts all boats. They're not competitors. They're serving the same audience. They big each other up. They know each other. In some cases, they used to work with each other. So I love the TNT crew. I think that's a, the, the best basketball show we've had. And, you know, as much as Stephen A., it, it, the, the entertainment side of him can get a little bit annoying. Got to respect him in the game. Respect Will Bond. I like it. I think it's a great, it's a great, uh, great collab, and it's a great idea to do this. Yeah, I, like I mean, that. they don't really. No one really has the exclusive media right to the tournament, so there you this go. This is where this is where you come in, and you're like, hey, who who wants the media <laughs> rights? Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> but while we don't have yeah. that, I will gladly enjoy the 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 cross collaboration yeah. between both orgs. I'm into that. Uh, definitely. Okay, let's get back to the phones. Let's go to the closer of the night. And shout out to Jay Boogie, man. Um, but let, let's let's keep Jay Boogie in our thoughts. He, he definitely yep. hit me up as usual. Hey, listen, life life hits us all, and positively and negatively, we all go through it. So just uh, yeah, just keep Jay Boogie in our thoughts. Let's hail him up. Let's, let's salute him in the chat. Let's hit him with them three capital S's. And he'll be he'll be back in no time. But shout out to Jay Boogie. Uh, let's keep him in our thoughts. All right. So the close of the night, we're gonna go to none other than the rhyme animal Chuck D. Let's go. Let's go. Salute to Jay Boogie. Prayers up. Yep. And uh shout out to Nick's Nation. Uh yeah, man. Can't wait to hear that Mike Sanders interview. Can't wait to see it. Oh, yes. That's got to be dope. Yeah, I, I enjoyed oh it, God. man. We went in for an hour and change. It was a great interview. Great interview. Let's not overlook Toronto on Friday. Nope. No fall asleep. Milwaukee, that's Dante's revenge game. Mm, mm, <laughs> talk about it. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> I don't know if we woke up with LaMelo out, and then all of a sudden we said, all right, this is, we can't sleep like we did with Phoenix. Yo, uh, Alex, incredible Tibbs impersonation. <laughs> Five, man. <laughs> but always remember, Herm Edwards, you play to win the you game. You play to win the game. Play to and win also, the game. If you play to win the game. Uh, hopefully, man, when we run it up points, Josh Hart won't get afraid and just <laughs> throws up shot. I got new reinvigorated inspiration here in, like, Triple OG, Clyde, and also Mike Green talk about how they was excited about the tournament. So mm. that, you know, that does something to old heads like me. I said, well, maybe it is something, all right? Maybe they should call it the Kobe. Take it right off the All-Star game, which is a bad haircut. Give it, give this winner, instead of calling it the IST, it sounds like a New York City defunct train line, man. <laughs> but anyway, my thoughts, my thoughts is like, listen, it, they got to play for something, man, to me. It's like 500000 when you spend a billion. What does that mean to the average fan that ain't seeing none of that? So I would say, like, automatic playing, but you got to win 42 games. If you win 50, then you get in the top four of the conference, right? I would say that that would make some kind of sense. Because, I mean, in the NBA, what they talk $500,000, they're still paying NBA players who ain't playing. Five hundred thousand dollars. So what does that mean to? Oh yeah, they're gonna win five hundred thousand. I, I think Eddie Curry still is getting paid, right? <laughs> he might. He said he might be. He said he might be. Back. Right, right. I was like, we got we got a man who can't play. He's getting nineteen million dollars. I mean, I, I mean, so telling us about money they're gonna win. I don't think that really drives the the vets. The vets. The vets are sleeping in November, man. They pacing themselves. You know, the vets they're really gonna spark up. Come January, 
come February. You're going to see more Dame time in December, and you're going to see guys like Brooke Lopez and our man Bobby Porter start to, like, come out of their shells in December and January and February. And new energies and new cats are going to be jumping out of the gym in November and October like they should. But, you know, we got to separate the All-Star game from Summer League. We're getting more ex- exciting out of the Summer League, so nobody really yeah. want to put their name on that. So, uh, yeah, man, so that's what I think. I said, I, now, but what I heard Mike Breen and Clyde talk about purists and how they was excited about what they were looking at, that sold me at 63. Rapid Fire, salute, salute. Nick Nation, CP, Alex, and crew. Can't wait for the next broadcast. I'm out. Yes, sir. Salute to the Rhyme Animal, Chuck D. Closing the show. Always appreciate it, man. Always appreciate it. Salute to the Ryan Animal, bro. A legend. Yep. And, and saluted your Tibbs impression. I appreciate it. <laughs> I, I've been working on it. I've been working on it. <laughs> but, but what Chuck was alluding to was, you know, when, when Breed and Clyde were talking about when it got to the point where you're talking about point differential, Nick still had their starters in late in this game. Did And, and Clyde was asking Breed what he thought about it as a basketball purist. I think it's all interesting. I I don't find running up the score in this situation bad taste or lack of class. I don't think so. If that's the objective of this game within the game, then go for it. You know, if that's the objective, go for it. Yeah, got to. Got to. You got to. Yeah. Look, man, if – and there, no one should be upset. You didn't see anyone upset because they were running up the score. I mean, what are you supposed to do? Hey, don't run up the score on us. Hey, right. man, we're trying to make this in-season tournament. What, what else – what other options are there? So, right. it is what it is. It is what it is. It is what it is. And and speaking of that that whole point differential situation, this was Josh Hart's comment on it and, and what he what he felt about that that whole thing. Here was Josh Hart. This is once again, courtesy of S and Y uh, TV. Here he is. Let's hear how it sounds. How much extra like? Is the point differential in your mind as the game is going on? Towards the end. Or? Towards the end. Um, so, like I said, it's, it's an interesting concept. I understand the concept, but, uh, you know, it's weird when you're in it. How much extra? All right. So, they they all they all were in it. You heard RJ talking to Julius on the bench. Like, yo, we could, we could get this thing. Mm-hmm. So, seems like uh, at least some players, no DeMar DeRozan, right? But at least for some players, they're into it. And we'll see how this thing goes, man. We'll see how it goes. Mar DeRozan stays chipless. Yeah. yeah. Stays ringless, man. Okay. Al, great show, man. Uh, tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, 3 p.m. Eastern time. We need to see you guys over at the NBA Reports. We are going league-wide with this thing. And the movement is getting stronger and stronger. We are getting guests by the week incredible guest by the week check out the, the even monday's episode with caitlin cooper i mean a lot of the content is evergreen and if you ever want to learn about what's going on around the league got to go to the nba report trust and believe we got a good thing brewing over there so we'll see you guys there on on uh, wednesday at 3 p.m eastern time friday as well same time remember that these shows are available in audio podcast format no reason to miss it catch us on all major podcast platforms uh, salute to our sponsors. Go to manscaped.com. Use promo code KFTV for 20% off plus free shipping. Go to underdogfantasy.com or use the link in our video description. Use Or you can use promo code KFTV for an instant deposit match of up to $100. Uh, stay tuned for the Underdog Fantasy uh, Game of the Week preview this week. Knicks versus Raptors. And also uh, the live play-by-play hosted by CK2K. So make sure you guys tap in with that. <coughs> And as I said, the Mike Saunders interview will be coming up later this week as well. So action-packed content on KFTV. If you missed anything, you can always go back. Salute to the replay gang. Salute to Brian Jordan. Franchise channel member says, we are surprised in the league without question. Nobody wants to really play us. Okay. Del Will, $10 Super Chat says, uh, we may not be the tallest team, but we have a bunch of dogs and bullies. Strong on O. Uh, Good defense. Pause. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna. I had to remix a sentence there. Uh, good defense. Defense is our identity. NY style. Okay. So to that guy, I had to re- had to remix his comment there. Uh, who else we got? I think we got everything. 
think we got all this the super chat so we appreciate everybody for donating tonight uh great support and we'll, and we'll see you guys man great show oh what else there's there another thing i wanted to put up there's another thing i wanted to put up here oh this was it hang on i don't know if you guys have started to see this on uh or, or you saw it on twitter al oh yeah let me pull up this uh this design here because this is this is great job um not sure who this is nick's homer nick's homer um created this graphic i don't know if they're a graphic artist or what but shout out to nick's homer who put together a graphic dedicated to nick's twitter and all of the personalities content creators and the like did an outstanding job man what a talent what a talent yeah for sure and i guess these are are these like pixar renditions yes pixar renditions okay well there's me and you in the middle yes he's, sir he's got front he's got, center uh, he's got the franchise and the Tratacast in the middle there kftv who we got uh we got our guys at hard nick's life up here we got our strickland shout out <laughs> shout out to Schwitty and the you got the swickly though there i think is that king deesh you got king deesh yeah king deesh up there too okay yep. okay at the top right who you got i see i think i saw papa left somewhere in here down left down left. okay all right so we got papa left in there the guys from from the toxic boys you got our guys from nick's film school you got macri and jeremy in there i right, look this looks like chris percy nine in percy yo nine. they really did that to andrew oh wow what what, what? <laughs> you see andrew's to the left oh, the nice. the i see i see yeah yeah yeah, they did a go. Oh, look, oh, this is Ari right here in the bottom left. If you see, <laughs> they next got, to Papa Left. Yeah, they got Ari next to Papa Left on the bottom left, and this must be Jay from Florida and to the far left. <laughs> good job, man. This this was a really good graphic. And then I think I see uh, you got State 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 from Harlem. He's in his Doctor Scrubs, <laughs> yelling into the phone and never working. This is good. This is a really, really great job, man. Talented artist. We we gotta big him up because this this was really cool, man. This is yeah. really cool. I, I'd like to, to get one of these, man. Salute to Nick's Homer for making this, man. This is fire. Now this is fire. This is fire. And if you haven't seen it, uh, go check it out on on Twitter. It's going around. He got. I don't know if this is MF Doom that he has here on the bottom right, but yeah, must be. That, that's nice. Good, good, great job by him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is mm -hmm. this is this CP the artist on the far bottom right the, the, with the ball head with the with the paint? Oh wow! He even put CP the artist in here. Wow! Wow indeed! With great the scarf job. and everything. Yeah, great job, man! Great job. Yeah. All right, man. Uh, so yeah, we'll see you guys on Monday. Great show. Oh, we got one more super chat that came through. Let me make sure I salute that person. Hoodies. Shout out to Hoodies Vintage, man. Nice bounce back win. Let's keep racking them up. Let's do it. We'll see you guys tomorrow on uh, the NBA Report, man. CP and Alex, we out here. Peace.